What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm doing something that I have not ever done before and honestly should have done a long, long time ago because it's so dang easy is making a cider, making a hard apple cider here in the United States as we call it. This is basically nothing more than fermented apple juice. Uh, you can get creative with it. You can add different kinds of yeast to it. You can add different kinds of apples. You can add different kinds of uh, hops and stuff as well in various ways to make it kind of more like a beer. And despite homebrewing for over six years, I have never made a cider. Um, well, we're changing that today. Should be a lot of fun. It's the beginning of November, which is kind of an awkward season for seasonal beers uh, because Oktoberfests like this one are kind of getting old and the pumpkin craze is kind of getting old too since that started like September 1st. So now we're at a point where it's kind of like, all right, what's next? What can we do? And this is where cider comes in, I think. There should be a really short brew day and probably a pretty short video as a result. So let's get into the specifics of it. From what I understand, most ciders are made with either Belgian yeasts or wine yeasts or US05 or sometimes Gewike yeast. Now what I wanna do with this cider is kinda go off in left field. It's never really a good idea for your first time making something and I'm gonna break that rule immediately because what the hell, it's home brewing and it's fun. So what I'm planning on doing is using a Saison yeast for this cider, hoping to get some of those nice peppery spicy phenol notes out of the yeast. Hopefully that combines well with the fruity apple notes. It does in most Belgian beers, so I would not be surprised if it's a good blend. I, I've seen Saison yeast for cider before. But to make this something slightly more interesting than just a plain old cider, I'm actually gonna dry hop the cider with a few ounces of mosaic hops uh, and see how that works. It's my first time doing this, so I'm not claiming to be an expert in anything you're gonna see in this video. So. Don't look to this necessarily as the way to make a cider. Please go check out The Brew Show because he's made a ton of different ciders and knows exactly what he's talking about and exactly what he's doing, unlike this guy. In fact, I actually got a lot of the information that I needed to make this cider from Trent, so it is definitely a good resource to check out. There's a few organizations I wanna thank for helping make this video possible though. The first is Northern Brewer. You can find the ingredients that you need to make cider on their website with the exception of apple juice. You're gonna go need to find that yourself. But they do have things like yeast and hops and the yeast nutrient that you're definitely going to need. Secondly, Clawhammer Supply. They make the system that I have been brewing on for the last about two years now. Um, they have both 120 and 240 volt versions, 10 and 20 gallon versions. They are a great system. I will not be using their system today because this is a straight to the fermenter cider. However, if you wanted to pasteurize your apple cider, if it had not already been pasteurized, their system would be a great way to do that. So for our fermentables, uh, there's no malts in this. It's just gonna be 100% pure apple juice. Um, you are gonna want to get certain kinds of apple juice though. You want to make sure it has no preservatives in it. Typically this is gonna be like found in the organic juice section of your grocery store probably, or if you're lucky enough, you can get to an orchard and grab five gallons or so of fresh squeezed apple juice. That is the best way to do it. Um, the fresh apple juice is going to have a lot of that natural flavor in it. It's gonna be hazy, it's gonna have some extra flavored compounds, whereas the 100% uh, clear juice that you find at the store may or may not be the same quality. The key thing to look at here is to make sure it doesn't have any things like benzoates, sorbates, or the glycolipids. These are compounds that are gonna inhibit the growth of yeast and potentially kill the yeast if it enters the cider or the juice that you choose to ferment. So make sure that you're looking at that label and make sure that it says nothing but apple juice. Asorbic acid is fine because asorbic acid is actually more of an antioxidant than anything else. I'm using pasteurized apple juice. This means that it's sanitary from the get-go. I can just dump it into my fermenter, pitch my yeast, and go ahead to uh, ferment it. If you don't have a pasteurized apple juice, though, you might want to go through a pasteurization step, which is not very complicated. You just take that volume of apple juice and heat it up to about 150 degrees for a couple minutes, and it should get the job done pretty quickly. After that, you can cool it back down and transfer into a fermenter to then pitch your yeast. For our hops on this one, we are going to be using nothing but mosaic in a dry hop. Um, I'm not going to be adding any sort of bittering hops because this cider is going to be super dry. Um, it's going to be naturally kind of bitter, so I want to kind of balance that out instead. And using dry hops is a good way to do that. So I'm adding in two ounces of mosaic at about uh, the third or fourth day of fermentation, depending on how quickly this thing moves along. I'm hoping that will really kind of bring out some nice like berry notes uh, and some little bit of like tropical kind of piney kind of... Um, 
just little additions that can hopefully add some nuance to this cider. For the yeast in this one, we're using Lalamon Belle Cezanne, which is a great Cezanne yeast. I want to use a Cezanne yeast because it'll, ni it'll get it nice and dry and because it's going to have that nice peppery, clovey, spicy character to it that is, uh, I think, a good complement to a traditional apple cider because um, the apple-y flavor is going to be prominent, obviously. However, it's also going to have a little bit of like a wine character, uh, which will be interesting. For the water in this one, well, there is no water. It's just pure apple cider. Uh, I can't give you a water profile. I suppose one could actually influence the water chemistry of their apple cider by adding in salts to the apple, uh, apple juice itself. I'm not sure how that would work at all, so I'm not gonna go ahead and explore that topic. Um, but if somebody has experience with that, somebody's a seasoned cider maker, please comment down below and uh, let us know if you play with the water chemistry of your cider at all and how does that influence the flavor. I'm really curious to find out. And that's it guys, we're just gonna go ahead and take this apple juice that I have downstairs and pour it into the fermenter, oxygenate it nicely, pitch some yeast and leave it. Uh, so without further ado, let's go do that. I sanitized my fermenter completely before adding in all the apple juice. Um, I added it in and I was sure to try and splash it as much as possible to really incorporate some oxygen into it for yeast health. I put in five and a half gallons of apple juice because I wanted to account for fermenter losses and to give me a full five gallons at the end of the process. Once I finished adding in all the apple juice, I grabbed my Anton Par Easy Dance. I took a quick OG sample and I found it to be a nice 1051. This should give us a cider in the range of six to six and a half percent ABV uh, once it's all finished. At this point, I pitched in my one packet of Lalamon Belle Saison yeast and left it to ferment. During the fermentation, I took samples and was sure to add yeast nutrient as I needed to um, to keep this thing moving along. About four days into the fermentation, I added my two ounce dry hop of mosaic. So now let's talk about the fermentation on this one. I'm not a cider expert once again, so I'm not gonna tell you everything there is to know about cider. There are cider yeasts out there, there are wine yeasts you can use, you can use ale yeasts, you can use a kvike yeast if you want to. I mean, hell, you could probably use a lager yeast if you wanted to. Um, I think I want to use a Belgian yeast for this one because I wanna play with the flavor on that, uh, I wanna blend that in, and I wanna get some of that characteristic dryness. Uh, this is a dry cider, however, you can also make ciders that are sweeter. If it goes all the way down and finishes fermenting and then you want to add sugar back into it to back sweeten it, you can add in potassium metabisulfate or sorbate to actually stabilize the cider and prevent it from fermenting further. That is another way to do that. Um, I like dry ciders, so I'm going to keep it on the dry side and not really back sweeten unless it is just too bitter. We'll find out when I actually get to the point of tasting it. Since this is a Cezanne yeast, it's probably gonna take its sweet time. The Belle Cezanne yeast is not as notorious as the Belgian Cezanne yeast for stalling, so I don't expect it to park itself at 10.30 and stay there for like three weeks. Um, it'll probably be done fermenting in about two weeks, I would expect, uh, and we'll see at that point what it looks like. If it's still relatively high, I will crank the temperature up and try to get it to finish out. Um, right now, I'm planning on fermenting this one at 75 degrees, which is comfortable for the Cezanne yeast and should give us a pretty nice kind of blend of uh, yeast character in this apple cider. If your Cezanne yeast wants to stall out on you though, and it does this every so often, the best way to fight that is to add some heat to it. You can go up to about 80 to 83 degrees with the Cezanne yeast if it's really being troublesome. 
that should get it to get going again and finish drying it out. The yeast will not stop until every single fermentable sugar has been found and consumed. Uh, this is an aggressive yeast that is going to just keep going and it will get very dry. So if you package anything you ferment with a Saison yeast, be damn sure that it's finished fermentation or that you have killed that yeast off through the use of a sorbate or potassium metabisulfate. Otherwise, it can continue fermenting in the bottle and it could result in a bottle bomb, which is a bad thing. Once again, this is the first time I've done this, so I don't really know what to expect. I'm not gonna give you too much advice on what else to do. I would think that an American ale yeast would make a pretty good cider. Um, I'm, it's pretty common for those types of things to be used in a cider. Um, it's gonna be a cleaner character. It might have a little bit of fruity ester, probably depending on your fermentation temperature. Um, I would expect wine yeast to be used a lot. Cider is a derivative of wine, and actually the unfermented cider is considered must, not juice. So uh, it's pretty close to the same thing. But, I mean, I guess you could also pressure ferment it too and get it done faster um, if you're using a different kind of yeast. Uh, it would get very clean. I'm not sure how that would affect it though. I really don't know. So I'm not really gonna try and make any sort of assumptions here about things that I don't necessarily have experience with. Either way, let me know what you guys prefer to do to ferment your ciders down in the comments section. So just to recap, what I'm doing is I'm pitching in one packet of Lalamand Belle Saison at about 70 degrees. I'm gonna raise it up to 75 degrees for the fermentation, which will take place over about 10 to 14 days um, and maybe longer depending on how that yeast wants to behave. Um, if it does stall out, I will raise it up to a higher temperature, maxing out about 80 to 83 degrees. Uh, and then finally, once it's finished fermentation, we'll go ahead, I'll keg it. I will carbonate this one because I want it, no, I don't want it to be a still cider. I want it to be a carbonated cider. And we'll get it on tap and serving relatively quickly. So anyway, I'll see you guys in a few weeks. Cheers. So for the fermentation on this cider, it was pretty much the exact same as if I had fermented a beer uh, with the same gravity. So we had a roughly two week fermentation bringing us all the way down to 1.000. I waited a few extra days to see if this would go below 1.000, but it really didn't want to. It parked there as the final gravity. The cider is obviously pretty dry, but I kind of like that flavor. So I decided not to stabilize and back sweeten and instead went ahead put it in the keg and force carbonated it at about 20 PSI for about three days. So this gives us roughly the same carbonation level as a standard beer. The cider is called Family, Friends, and Flannel because it's coming out right around that Thanksgiving season, right around the end of fall. It comes in at 6.8% ABV and zero IBUs because dry hopping doesn't add IBUs. So for the appearance of the cider, it's a really vibrant yellow color, uh, very pale. Um, it, it's reminiscent of, I don't know, a beer you'd make purely with Pilsner malt perhaps, um, but it has this extra level of color to it that you don't get out of a beer like that. So it's very, very pale while still having a lot of color and this nice little haze uh, element is actually really nice as well. You can see the bubbles rising up through it. It has no head because it has no protein in it to create a head in the first place. So even though the cider is quite carbonated, you're not gonna visually see that with the exception of the bubbles coming through the actual liquid. So going in for the aroma on this, it's very cidery, obviously. I mean, it's a cider, so it's got some apple character, um, but it has a lot more complexity than just apples. It's got a nice white wine character to it. Um, so it has like a nice kind of white grape almost. Um, it's got a little bit of floral note as well, almost like a pineapple as well coming off. But now let's go in for uh, mouthfeel slash texture. And it's super dry. Obviously this was meant to be a pretty dry cider, so there's really no surprise there, um, but the uh, overall character of the mouthfeel is rather dry. Uh, very light bodied. It is um, relatively well carbonated. It's, it's coming through on the, on the palate, so there's definitely a little bit of sparkling character to this. It adds a nice zip to the whole thing. 
All right, so then moving in for flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm actually really impressed with the way this worked out. This is a nice tart cider. Um, it's actually relatively close to what I would expect to come out of like a Philly sour fermentation. Um, it has that nice malic acid kick to it, but there's a lot of apple flavor that still comes through. as just this really good, crisp kind of apple note. Despite being rather tart, it is certainly very drinkable. Um, it tastes very much like other ciders that I've had. So it's nice to have that kind of feeling of, okay, I made it, you know? <laughs> There is a little bit of like faux sweetness to this because your mind interprets a fruit as a sweet object. So there is that fruit character that then makes it feel like, okay, there's a balance here, but this is a very, very dry drink, a very, very tart one. But overall, it honestly came out very nicely. But now let's talk about the other elements that I put in here, the Saison yeast and the dry hops. So um, I'm not getting too much Belgian yeast character out of this. I suppose if I'm really, really hunting for it, I can get a little bit of a spicy note to it. Um, but it's incredibly, incredibly hard to find uh, because it is overpowered by all of the apple and the tartness. Um, it does feel very similar to a Saison though, and I could see, I could see that blending relatively well. Uh, with a Saison, perhaps, if you were to make a beer cider hybrid. There is a little bit of an aftertaste of bubblegum, but I'm not 100% sure if that's from the yeast or if that's from the dry hops. Because uh, the dry hops certainly have some character that are coming through. Uh, there's a little teeny bit of dankness that's here. Um, and there's definitely a little bit of a berry note. There is a slight pineapple character in here as well, which is uh, a nice welcome addition. It blends really, really well with the apple flavor. I'm pretty sure that that dry hopping added that slight haze in here. Um, and it has added some serious complexity. I think that that might be also responsible for some of that faux sweetness that I'm getting because it is very berry-like, that white wine character. This is overall a pretty great success. Um, the cider tastes like a cider should. It's exciting to make something different other than beer. And um, it really does hit the spot for this time of year. It's still kind of got a little bit of a fall theme, but now we're heading into Thanksgiving. It's getting colder outside. It's definitely a warming drink for the time of year given the higher alcohol content. And uh, it's just a really nice way to close off the season. I just can't get over how you can get such a good product out of such a small amount of work. Now, of course, there's still plenty of things we can do to make a better cider next time. Although I do think in my limited experience that this recipe was pretty solid. Um, but there are some things I want to play around with next time. And firstly, I would want to go get some fresh squeezed apple juice, non-pasteurized, do the pasteurization step, then bring it down, add your yeast, of course. Um, I think it would be really nice to add Hallertau Blanc to this as a dry hop. Uh, that would really bring out those wine and gooseberry notes that I'm kind of getting a little bit of in this. Um, and it still has some of that tropical flavor as well. So I think that would be a neat addition for complexity. Um, but that's about it. I think the Saison use was a good choice. Uh, it did bring it down dry enough. That wouldn't have been a difficult test though for pretty much any yeast strain out there because it just is such an easy fermentation for them, just pure sugar. But it would be kind of cool to see uh, experimentation with different types of yeasts in this and seeing what they uh, produce. Overall though, very easy to do, would definitely do again, highly recommend. So to recap, the flavor in this one is a just really nice tart apple character. There is some like blueberry notes in this as well as some pineapple and a little bit of tropical character and a little bit of white wine character as well. It's a very nice complex uh, cider that is a very easy drinker as well. And if you're not into that sort of tartness, that super dry cider character, um, then I would recommend stabilizing your cider. Add in a combination of uh, potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite to stabilize the cider. That means killing off the yeast and then adding in a little bit of back sweetening character. I would recommend back sweetening with uh, non-fermented apple cider. If you can find some at your local grocer or, and then just blend that into your dry cider, that brings that sweetness back while still maintaining a proper cider character. Um, and I think that would be pretty solid. Of course, you can also back sweeten with an unfermentable sugar like monk fruit. Monk fruit extract is an easy way to back sweeten without too much effort. 
Um, and it's also unfermentable, so you don't have to stabilize if you're concerned about that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something and I hope I inspired you to make your own cider if you haven't tried it before. It's super easy and a lot of fun and actually makes a pretty solid drink at the end of the process. Thank you Trent for helping provide some guidance. Go check him out again at The Brew Show if you want more information on this sort of thing. And for you seasoned cider experts who've done this a million more times than me, please let me know what you think of what I created. Uh, and if you have any ideas for what you think I should do next time I make a cider like this, uh, let me know in the comment section what you think. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, please don't forget to hit that like button. And if it's your first time here and this video caught your eye because you wanted to make a cider, please check out the rest of my videos on my channel page. I have a lot more brewing content. Uh, prim primarily focused on beer over here, but definitely fun to check out some non-beer fermentations as well. And I think I'll be doing more of those in the future. If you want to support the channel, please consider checking out the merchandise store. You should find that down below the description box if Teespring's working again. It wasn't before. You can get a bunch of t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, pint glasses, other various kinds of merch in this design and many others. So please go check that out. It's a great way to support me. I get about 30% of the sticker price on those and it really does help out quite a bit. And then you get something out of it yourself. The other ways to support me include my Patreon, include channel memberships, and include the super thanks button, which is a quick and easy way if you feel inclined to help support me. All of these things go into helping me make my channel better and helping me keep doing what I'm doing, so I really do sincerely appreciate it. I also have an Amazon store where you can find a bunch of the equipment that I use on the regular to make beer with and recommend. So check that out. I'm also available on Instagram and Facebook as The Apartment Brewer if you want to follow for some different content that's a little bit more frequent. And lastly, if you're still here, thank you for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot to me and not everyone does it. So this one goes out to you guys. And until the next one, happy Thanksgiving and cheers.